Aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. And this show is Politics for the People. Our topic is can January 6th Select Committee do it in time? So I welcome shows this show's discussion panel. And these panelists are Jay Fidel, Winston Welch, Tim Apicella. So welcome uh, to all of you to our discussion show. Let's get on with it. And our first question is really the title. So what, what is it that we uh, can expect the committee or need to expect the committee to do in time? What do they need to do? Jay, can you um, exclaim a bit? Well, yeah, that's a really good question. What, what, are the, what are the things they should do in order to meet the test of the 2022 election. I mean, uh, it all starts with the fundamental issue of um, um, bringing the facts out in such a way, maybe getting some indictments going on uh, so that um, in those things affect the 22, 2022 election. And how do you do that? You know, Congress in itself does not have the power to indict or prosecute, they can only recommend. Um, so the positive side of it is that um, uh, they can, uh, what was your term, Tim? Drib drab. They can, they can drib drab the information out to the public, which they are doing. And that's why I watch Rachel Maddow so intently because that's where the drib drab happens for me, but the others too. Um, and, and that's that helps to sort of get the public um, at a higher level of awareness. Um, and then, of course, there's the report. And um, that's the biggest question, I suppose. Will, will the report be out in time? So just for this discussion, let me say that um, November is going to be election day, but some states, some jurisdictions have uh, absentee voting that, that's a month earlier, or maybe more even. And so you have to factor that into this time frame you're asking about, Stephanie. Um, so if, um, say, September, sometime in September, um, would be you know, the last time you could reach some voters. So, and then of course you want to get it earlier than that so it settles in, you know. Public opinion doesn't necessarily turn on a dime. Sometimes it does, but for planning purposes, you have to, you have to sort of get it into the nether uh, uh, earlier so that it settles in. So people talk about it and it, 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 it forms public opinion. So I would say sometime in the summer. And the question is, there's two questions I think come out of that. And I'm happy to get off my, my pedestal here. Number one is, can the committee get to a level where it can do an appropriate report to reveal what is certainly forming up as a huge and treasonous conspiracy, especially around Trump. Can it, can it do that in time? Okay. And then, of course, you have to look at the negative factors and the criticism that will always come from the GOP and, and all of these foibles that go on about people who are willing or not willing to testify, um, there'll be more of that. And so there are negative things that slow the committee down or that deflect and distract us from what it is finding, what it is drib drabbing, and what would be in this SACO report. So that the question then becomes, will it be able to do these things by whatever deadline that is? So those are really two questions, actually four questions. You know, what are the positives? What are the negatives? Mm -hmm. Can they do it? Will they do it? And will they do it in time? All right, very, very helpful. Very focusing for our discussion. May I please go back to the drip draft? I have read or heard uh, on TV that there, there are some questions about why are they, is this a drip draft? giving out some of these messages without identifying the speakers. And is that is that okay to do? And is that anything that is justifiable? What do you think, Jay? That is that drib drab number one and number two, 
do you, what do you think its purpose is or does it have a purpose? Well, I think a yes, it is drib drab for sure. Uh, they're tipping us off about things, and um, you know, I think it, if you if you look at this as a way to inform the public, raise awareness in the public, get the public interested, interested, because the, the greatest risk of all is that the public tunes tunes out, doesn't care, and there's a lot of people already don't care. They've heard it all before. They're they have fatigue about this committee. They have fatigue about the insurrection. They've been distracted by the things the GOP is doing, which is what the GOP wants. So as to whether it's OK to drip drab this out without identifying exactly who it is. Yeah, sure. This is a reality show, man. This is the battle of the reality shows. And so it's more interesting. <laughs> If you don't reveal these things, it's this is coming on next week's episode. So stay tuned. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> Good. All right. So there, there's a you know, little excitement in the game here. Um, and uh, maybe it's a little bit of uh, against the maybe gaslighting. So um, when oh, it's not it's not telling lies. It's yeah. not deceiving anybody. It is really giving you a preview of what's to come. Yeah. Uh, if they if they did deceive people or tell lies, they would lose their credibility and the whole project would be off the side. So mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they are doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, how how important so far? Um, OK, Winston, what what what's important so far about the the reports that they've been giving all these reveals? What what these little reveals? What how important is this? For the and and especially for the midterm election, if you want a goal for discussing why it's important or not, is it important? Well, for those of us that may have been horrified, which should be every American, by the events of January sixth, uh, I don't think that these will make much of a difference. Honestly, uh, it, it's important to have these historical facts laid out, but they're just coming out now. As I said, like eleven months after this thing has taken place. This is really, really late. They they should have started and gotten this out much, much earlier. But OK, it is what it is. Um, if if this stuff comes out by January, February, March, that's fine. But who is it that the report is actually trying to reach? Is it trying to reach um, John Q. Public in general? Uh, is it trying to reach the Fox News watcher? Is it trying to reach the, uh, the theoretical soccer mom? Um, who is swayed in the Virginia uh, gubernatorial election. Uh, maybe it's the latter. I don't know. It should be everyone. Every, every American has a vested interest in understanding the events of uh, January 6th, who caused them, what led up to them, how we prevent it again, who literally tried to overthrow our country and take over our institutions. Um, and there's been a lot of damage done. So as far as who who's important to and, and what the effect is, I would say it's for all of us, whether that actually takes effect and percolates down to the people it needs to get is another question. But I think if we look back just a couple of years ago, um, not even a couple of years ago, a year ago, think of the, the um, pure chaos, the fear, the the nausea that the, that the country was undergoing that when you have how many how many defense secret former defense secretaries signed that paper saying the united states military doesn't get involved in these things this is insane in the world's uh it, you know largest and, and and most important democracy there was a couple of things though that i you know, wanted to point out is that there was a you know there was the the summit on democracy or something along that that joe biden held virtually and it's just sort of trying to bolster democracies now he left out a few um and then included a few others uh but basically it was a, a broad scale scope but it says um you know america's uh, vox had an article um recently, it was uh, last week on the 9th uh, by Zach Beauchamp, and he says uh, that American democracy is tottering. It's not clear that it's not clear Americans care. I don't think that's true. I think they're just fatigued and exhausted. Um, hmm. So when it comes right down to it, if they're given a choice between the steady Eddie, maybe he's a little bit boring, maybe he's a little bit calm. Um, but you know what? 
uh, they're going to go with that rather than than the circus clown uh, who really had some uh, nefarious uh, things at heart, along with the whole cabal of people. It needs to come out. It's coming out. It's coming out in dribs and drabs. It's coming out wholesale. I love the the Phil Waldron, the backer of the election conspiracy theory with his with PowerPoint that he circulated to Mark Meadows that then he turned over. So it's going to be these little things that come out. Um, well, what do you think it was Liz Cheney's intent? Because she was the first, of course, as the, the vice of the of the committee, but she was the first to read these these messages out anonymous as with anonymity. So what do you think she was trying to do with that? Do you think that was she was being intentional or is it just a matter of getting information, sharing information? What do you think Liz Cheney was thinking? It was going to she's thinking that I'm a I'm an elected representative of the United States uh, Congress, and it is my it is my responsibility to inform the American public. And if it's not happening via the normal channels or whatever it is, she needs to get that out. So she, whatever Liz Cheney does to get out the information, um, she needs to do that because she also has a special place among these 10 Republicans that have stood up and said, this is su such an anathema to our society. We must challenge this. It doesn't matter what political party you ostensibly belong to, because her party, of course, has been completely hijacked and stolen from her, and she is trying to regain that party. And so all power to her to for America to have a principled uh, conservative party that is not held hostage by one individual or uh, extreme ideologues who are intent on destroying our fundamental understanding of our society and the nature of our democracy. So I, I applaud Liz Cheney for however she gets out information. Okay. Okay. So it, I, I, that, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Um, Tim, did you get any sense that there was any blame or, or that, that, that committee report was pointing to anybody as being mastermindful or anything in that report. Did you get a sense that there was a, a, a an idea there that might there might be an indictment coming? What do you think? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, first off, um, getting to I want to touch on a couple of points from Winston and, and and Jay, and that is Winston sure. is absolutely correct that the American public is fatigued. They're exhausted on this stuff, but that's why they're playing it out in dribs and drabs. They, and to Jay's point, this is a reality show they've turned this into. And guess who what? Liz Cheney um, is playing the Benghazi playbook like, uh, like a Stradivarius oh, that's uh, instrument. And this is now a drama that's going to tantalize and titillate the American public. And they will start tuning in because, oh, did you hear what they said yesterday about Mark Meadows? Well, wait, do you see what they're going to say about Steve Bannon the next, you know, next week? You know, mm -hmm. I'm surprised we don't see commercials saying, tune in next week, you know, uh, like a soap opera. And it's <laughs> the biggest mistake the GOP ever made was to deny the commission in the Senate because the commission <laughs> would have had to kept the wraps on it and they can't release anything as a commission, but as a House Select Committee, well, we have, as Jay said, you know, we have the reality TV show here and it's going to be in full swing until probably, I don't know, February. I think the report comes out in May. And the reason I think it comes out in May is because what do all the traditionally all the network TV stations do um, in June? They start playing reruns because they know people are in summer vacations. They're out. The kids are out of school. No one's really watching TV like they do during the, uh, the winter months. So why would you want to release the report during the summer? You want to get it out in late spring, uh, probably even maybe as early as um, April. But um, they want this in everyone's, um, they want this on everyone's minds. And then, like I said, they're, they're, and Jay said, they're going to play this like a reality show. And it's, it's great. It's great to watch. I mean, I was glued to the TV watching what Mark Metal, what the text to Mark Metal was doing. I was captivated. 
<laughs> and and before that, I was I was burned out. I said, I, I can't take this anymore. I can't I can't listen to it anymore. Well, I'm back in the chair again. <laughs> well, that, right, so, so, Tim, what does that mean for that report that aren't you're saying now they've got to get that report out in late uh, spring? Well, so, they're not going to wait for, you know, they're not going to they're not going to follow the judicial trail and wait for Steve Bannon to be forced to take the Fifth Amendment in front of the select committee. They're not going to wait for Mark Meadows to take the fifth. They're going to, they already have the information. They already have the reports. It's not important where they show up or not. All that was is the cherry on top of the Sunday to bring in those folks and have them confirm that which they already know. So then let's release the documents. That would be part of the report. They could already be drafting that report is what you're saying. Oh, count on it. They have so much, right? Count on the first draft. And, you know, Liz Cheney, like I said, she's, she's right in the middle of all this stuff. And she knows how to fight like a Republican. She's teaching the Democrats a few things like the Lincoln Project taught Democrats on how to do this and do this the right way. And, and she's right in the middle of it. So, um, hey, tune in next week. You know? well, well, Tim, do you think we've learned anything? Is she teaching them how to not do a Mueller report? I mean, that- oh, perfectly, perfectly that. stated. Absolutely perfectly stated. She's teaching them not how to do a Mueller report. Absolutely. Perfect. And that would be why to get, kind of go over that because that, you because know, that she wants them to look bad and she wants, and to follow Winston's point, um, this is a serious crime that's taken place and there's no room for it to be diminished and ignored by the American public. Um, she is, she is not only is she playing the Benghazi playbook, but she's also playing the patriotic playbook. And that is, this crime shall not go unanswered, and those who are involved shall not go unpunished. And, um, you know, my hat's off to her. And again, I, I don't agree with one bit of her politics, but I certainly admire her as a citizen and a patriot of this country. And uh, her and Adam Kingsland, and Jer, um, my hats are off to both of them. To, to stand in the wind and to take on the slings and arrows of their party and be, you know, criticized and name-called and and ostracized, but it's not about politics for them. It really is about patriotism. And I, you know, I admire that. I really do. Mm -hmm. Been a long time. <laughs> it's refreshing to see it. <laughs> yeah, right, good. So, so, so Jay, um, thank you, Tim. That, that very, that's very interesting. Uh, Jay, so is Mark Meadows gonna take the full fall of this, of, 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 of this uh, is is if he gets indicted, is he going to have to go down for this? With well, you have to down? separate it out. You have to separate it out. And one is the um, indictment for criminal contempt of Congress. Okay, and um, that that will get referred to Merrick Garland, who um, may or may not decide to prosecute him. Um, you know, the uh, fact is Meadows is closer to the president and to privilege um, than uh, Bannon. And um, so uh, Merrick Garland may, you know, take a, a conservative view um, and decide not, you know, that there is a privilege and he shouldn't have to be. I think that would be wrong because you know, the privilege, if it is, is only about some questions. It isn't about blowing off Congress and not appearing, okay? So it, it should be an easy decision. I worry, however, that Merrick Garland is a, is a wimp, um, that he is going to make us wait for a long time, and that it's not certain at all that he's gonna you know, find for an indictment. Mm -hmm. I, I really worry about that. And that would really take the wind out of the sails of all of this uh, if Congress were made impotent that way. Um, so I, I hope he, he agrees that if the guy wants to uh, raise the question of privilege, it's question by question. It's not not it's not refusing to appear. Well, so anyway, that's one criminal indictment. The other is the criminal indictment of espionage, not espionage, but uh, treason and conspiracy, which are pretty serious. Um, and I think it's good, you know, to talk about this whole drib drab thing. Um, is that, you know, people are, for the first time in a year, they're beginning to realize the magnitude of what happened legally. 
this is this isn't just a riot. It isn't just a bunch of ruffians out for a good time. This is treason. This is trying to overthrow the United States government. Nothing, nothing could be more serious, nothing. And so that's coming out now. And that's I think that's one of the reasons, Tim, um, that people are waking up on this, that their level of awareness and interest is increasing because that word is slipping in and the possibility of serious, serious criminal process may take place. And the question, you know, is in this second uh, indictment, um, whether, uh, you know, they can get Meadows uh, after he pleads the fifth. Remember, if you plead the fifth, you can be granted immunity, right? And then you have to answer the question. And then we go back for another criminal contempt if you don't answer the question. I mean, it's, it's just complicated and very time consuming. And you know that he would have a plan on that because right now he is quite concerned about the second one. Uh, being caught up in treason. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that probably he could be, I said this on the show yesterday, probably he could be indicted and prosecuted and even convicted of treason um, without testifying about it, because there's so much in the way of documents. And finally, on the question of privilege, I want to say something I mentioned yesterday, and that is waiver. If you get in there and you write a book, make an appearance, make several appearances, talk about your conversations with the president, um, you know, release all this uh, uh, texting and email and what he's done, you know, you're waiving privilege. And arguably, he has the authority, the power legally to do that. So, um, you know, if there is ultimately a question of whether he can hide behind privilege, that undermines his position um, in that regard. And finally, before I get off my stump here, I wanna tell you that what's happening in the select committee in Congress is only part of the reality show. Other things are happening and some of them are moving to fruition. Some of them will have to wait. Uh, Letitia James supposed to be able to depose Trump on January 7th, that's two weeks away. Uh, she can get him into the chair on a deposition that is going to heighten this reality show to white hot. OK, um, and even if it isn't January 7th, if she gets an order requiring him to appear, if she gets him to sit down. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, um, that's one thing. The other thing is the, uh, the district attorney in Georgia who, who is going after Trump for um, you know, asking for 711,780 votes. Remember that one, Rappens, Rappensburger. Yeah. Um, if that gets into court, gets, gets public, that's another thing that's going to heighten public awareness. And finally, and this only came up this week, there's this guy who is the attorney general of the District of Columbia who filed a lawsuit on behalf of the District of Columbia. Yeah against not only, you know, the people in the, the, the insurrection that day, but against the conspirators, the John Doe's and the Jane Doe's and the Doe corporations that funded it. He's going after all of them. And he's got a really good case. Um, that is going to raise public awareness. That's another sideshow uh, that has the same effect of, you know, this, this reality show. What's missing, and I'll, I'll leave this after, what's missing, what's AWOL here is Merrick Garland. He should have started an investigation. He should have seated a grand jury back in January, as soon as he was appointed. And he hasn't done anything that we know of. People say, oh, maybe he's doing something he just hasn't said. Hey, if he was doing something, it would have leaked. Something would have gotten out. I can't believe that it, he, he's doing it and it didn't get out. I believe he's not doing anything. He's a wall and he's a failure. I'll stop. Jay, Jay, you answered one of the questions I was going to ask, but I'm not sure I understand it completely. I heard John Dean say that Meadows had already blown his Fifth Amendment. Right. Or he he can't take it because he's already given the information and, and testimony through the documents so that he already can't use the Fifth Amendment. 
I'm not as our resident. That may be so. I'm not I'm not familiar with how you waive the Fifth Amendment, but that may that may make a lot of sense. And if he uh, takes the Fifth Amendment, that, that will be litigated. He'll well, insist that he has a right. executive privilege. Certainly executive privilege on that point. Yeah. yeah. Not, as in none or some, Tim. He's waived it. He's executive waived privilege. it. He's waived it. Okay. Right. All right. So, okay. Well, I mean, John Dean's usually pretty good on this stuff, but he did, there was a very quick comment. It just raised the question, which you started to answer, Jay. So thanks for that. Well, well Winston, I'm hearing from Jay, <laughs> maybe some things are developing here that this committee is yielding some light, sunlight. What do you think, Winston? And that it may impact uh, the people. I mean, we've been in such a cloud. So what, what do you think? Do you agree with him on that? Let us pray that it's <laughs> true. I, I, you know, there, we have undergone such a collective trauma. And maybe, maybe Tim and Jay's comments are, are correct that, that America can't take it full scale. So it does need to be released like, uh, you know, stories of old where they print one, one chapter a week, uh, you know, so you could, you could uh, read the whole thing. Honestly, given how what we used to what we were where we were at a, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago, it wasn't day by day. It was not even hour by hour. It was tweet by tweet. We have become um, really uh, damaged as far as our ability to focus and concentrate and come up with a coherent, logical um narrative that people can follow that they have the the pa the patience or the the bandwidth to follow given everything else that they're going through however it is required of those of us who love our nation to do so uh, i would like to refer our gentle viewers to a, a a really good article yesterday i thought in slate it will not overwhelm you it was maybe five pages long called the chilling lesson of mark meadows text messages um, and, it, and it really details in there how uh, the Donald didn't want the rioters to go home. And even it was interesting because you even had uh, Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram of Fox calling and saying, take off your attack dogs, please say something. Our, our, our country's on fire, even though, you know, we have you poured gasoline on it. Well, we need you to pull back now. Um, even if I think Ivanka was even in there, Ivana, whatever. Yes, the, the, the yes, daughter. She, yes she that was, was a great article. Thank you. Yeah. So we need to really be aware that this is the person, these are the people behind this who fostered this, who encouraged this. It might be seeming as one man, but it's not. It's a it's a group of people who think they just know better how to run this nation than this nation. And uh, they're a very dangerous group. Uh, they've been very active in state legislatures across the, the nation, as we know, uh, to try and uh, subvert uh, voting rights and, and all of that. We can come up with common sense solutions as, as a, a nation together. We cannot run the nation when it's one um, group trying to destroy and subvert our basic democratic processes. So, uh, you know, more power to Liz Cheney, Adam Kitzinger. They, they are true American heroes standing up for the values that uh, all of us should believe in, that all of us, you know, when you, you pledged allegiance to the flag in the olden days, now we don't do that anymore. Uh, you know, we, we pledged to the, uh, the republic for which it stands. Uh, mm -hmm. this, is, this is part of our duty as citizens to inform ourselves. So for those of you who can't, uh, or, or you know, you're worried about flipping to your next TikTok or Instagram, Take a few minutes, sit down with these articles, go on Google News, If ask for a news digest if you can't do it, or ask someone who you trust and believe who understands what's going on for a synopsis and why it's important for you to pay attention. In any event, this show is part of it. You guys are part of it. Uh, yeah. We will get to the, the bottom of the truth. Whether it makes a difference or not, I would really, really hope so. And if the driven drab is the way to go or the splashy or however it needs to get out. Um, yeah, good. Um, so I think the big question is, of course, following this discussion is, is, is the committee going to recommend an indictment for the past president, Tim? I think the evidence will certainly point that way. Um, 
you know, uh, Jay mentioned, you know, what's going on in Georgia and Jay mentioned what's going on in the Southern District of Manhattan. I think that gets them closer to uh, any kind of criminal prosecution than this committee report will give. Um, you know, what, what's it, what, what will really come out of this is election tampering. And that per se is not treason. Treason has a very narrow definition. It usually involves uh, an outside enemy outside the borders of the United States. Mm -hmm. When you aid and abet uh, the enemy is, is treason. Mm -hmm. This is serious. It's, it's uh, trying to um, rig an election. And as the you know, commander in chief and the president of the United States, that certainly is um, a, a horrible charge to be levied against a president of the United States. Hmm. However, uh, I think he gets out of uh, some of the criminal charges that could be levied, but he certainly will be um, damaged. I think he be, should be prohibited from entering his name in the 2024 election under the 14th, 14th Amendment, paragraph three. I think that's a shoe in. And I Congress and that's the that's select true. committee could address that exact question. And, and, and whoever that candidate, who, yes, and whoever the candidate is that has standing in the election, all they do is pick up the report and take that report into the court and says, I don't want this, this candidate running for president of the United States in 2024. And I think that happens by somebody, somewhere, somehow. Um, oh, so a candidate could do that? Yes, a candidate that has standing. But it'll have to go to court because Trump will make yes. Make it will have to court. go to court. But what better uh, uh, um, what better brief of of, of evidence than yeah. the select committee's report? Exactly. Yeah. It's well, all right there. It's 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 it ha the only thing it doesn't have is a bow on it. Yeah. Right. We could put the bow on it. Well, let's do one lightning round here to finish up as we're uh, getting close to end time. So so Jay, can you give us a brief? comment on on that issue that is yeah now. you asked him a minute ago whether he thought that would be an indictment for um insurrection uh, treason whatever whatever it is the larger conspiracy um and i think that the uh, I, I think that the uh, committee has or will have enough evidence to justify that recommendation but remember it's got to go to merrick garland who mm -hmm. may or may not do anything with it uh, that's a great concern to me. Uh, the other concern is that it's it's going to wind up in the Supreme Court, and uh, the Supreme Court is no longer reliable uh, as a place of justice. Sorry. And a matter of fact, uh, in the next show at uh, at noon, we're covering the reliability of the Supreme Court because that's the backstop to all of this. What they do when it gets there, and you know, Trump is going to take it there. Okay. So Winston, how does that affect you, your thinking about the situation? Boy, you know, I, as much as I might share in Jay's belief about that, I want to think that the courts will step up as they did during the election. Uh, certainly, we've seen a politicization there and uh, their approval ratings going down with the public. But if, as John Roberts said, if people stop believing in us, then what are we? We are a nation of rule of law. That is the fundamental thing. I'm not expecting any indictments out of this, or if they are, they will be minor, low level. Merrick Garland isn't going to do anything. The best we can hope for is a uh, complete repudiation of what has happened here, a uh, full accounting, and that hearts and minds are changed and says this was a very detrimental wrong uh, four years we suffered and culminating in this last month with a crescendo on the 6th of January. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, good comment. Thank you. And Tim, how about a final comment here for the program? Final comment is I recall very distinctly when I was about 14, 15 years old, and I, I told my friends, no, I can't play basketball. I've got to run home and watch the Watergate hearings. And I did that for months, a hot summer month. I watched Sam uh, Rayburn and I watched them all, Sam Urban. And, uh, I watched them all for months on end and I was fascinated. Um, I can't wait to be that little kid again in a grown, a little older body and uh, watch the drib and drab as uh, the select committee comes up with the report and the, the reports that will come out of it. I, I think this is a serious, horrible, serious crime that's been committed against our constitution and our rule of law and our democracy. And 
I want to see this follow out. And if it's, if it's like a Benghazi report and it's dribs and drabs, so be it. But I want to see justice, um, I want to see justice identified and I want to see justice served. This, uh, Stephanie, I want to add one thought to, to sure. Tim's comment. Um, a friend of mine um, spends a good part of the year in Singapore. Uh -huh. he, came back, he came back this morning. And so I talked to him and I said, are you following what's going on in Congress? And he said, he said, are you kidding me, Jay? Uh, we watch it as much as you do. We see MSNBC and CNN and all that every single day. We watch it all day long. And in fact, the whole world does. So what we have is a, a uh, you know, a reality show that the entire world is watching. This is all playing out now. This is the trial right now. Well, this is so important to hear uh, from, from you and especially the international context. So thank you so much for all of the discussion and uh, insight you bring to it. This is um, Think Tech Kauai and this show is uh, Politics for the People. It's weekly and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Mahalo for your viewership and aloha. <laughs>